get that to be of an opinion and the word of again means from so to be from an opinion in other words someone had to teach you that someone had to teach you that opinion that you hold so strong all right to set affection on the flesh obedient to the flesh of sympathy the feelings or sensitive nature okay in other words if you've looked at Well, let's look at it this way. Every homosexual that you'll ever come across, if you've noticed, even even the, the females, they are a little more sensitive than your average person. Okay, and you know why. It's because they have come into too much connection with their carnal mind. They've let it completely rule their lives. Well, it's, it's an infatuation with oneself. That's literally what it is. I mean, yes, it is a demonic spirit that, that tempted them to do that. But they have literally developed and trained their mind, or disciplined their mind, to enjoy that lifestyle. They turned it over. They turned it over, okay? They, yeah, they've, they've let it rule their lives. Yep. Luke 21. Where is he? Verse 11. Nope. Verse 32, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away till all be restored. And that has been twisted so many times in the churches to say, Oh, well, I was talking about the generation of Christ and his disciples. No, it wasn't. The word generation, if you look it up, means the generation of Adam, mankind, the, the Adam carnal nature. Okay? As long as the Adam carnal nature exists, heaven and earth will still remain. Is everybody following me? That's why he said, go over all nations, baptizing and teaching them. He didn't say they would all receive it. He just said, teach them. Not everybody's been taught. Not everybody's heard the truth yet. And when I say that, guys like Kenneth Copeland or any, or not Randy, um, Keith Moore and Justin Duplantis and all them, they are preaching that they're going nationwide. They are not teaching the truth. I don't care who they are. They're not preaching the truth. You cannot preach one lie and expect it to be the truth and expect anybody to understand the truth. You preach one lie, you broke the law. <coughs> Do we follow? And if you break the law, you've done what? You're condemned. So anything you preach from that moment forward is going to be condemned. Hello? Watch. Heaven and earth shall, shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, 
drunkenness, cares of this life, and that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come in all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. And what does it mean by a snare? It means a trap. So it's gonna it's literally gonna come upon them as a trap. What does that mean? Well, with any trap, it's got to be prepared, but be prepared for by somebody. All right. Let's say you're going to go out and trap an animal. You got to go into the woods well in advance to prepare the trap, so they don't know what's there. Well, you got to bait it, yeah. But the the point being is the trap's been already set. We're following, huh? It was set in Genesis. Sometimes some people get through it. There are some animals that are smart enough that they'll take the bait right off the, the net and never get caught in the net. Thank you for showing me. There we go. Watch you, therefore, pray always. Pray. That sounds like eternity, right? That means to be constant in prayer. That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand, there's the word again, histomy, comes from the word tithmi, which means what? To take a battle stance. Now why would you be taking a battle stance before the Son of Man? No, he's not either. No, he's not either. He he won his battle. He's not battling anymore. No, I'm talking about the nurse. That's what I'm talking about. He won his battle. He's not fighting anymore. I'm not talking about Yahshua. I'm talking about us. What did I just say? Why would we be taking a stand in front of him? He's the commander. He's the general of the army. That's what we're waiting for, is the general to say, give us the command. Go. Is everybody following? It doesn't say we're going to be fighting right now. It says we're going to take the stand. Prepare for the battle. Usually when you prepare for the battle, and, and let me explain this, when you prepare for a battle or are preparing for a battle, there's a select group that goes in long before the military ever steps foot on the foreign soil. There's a chosen few that go in, and they, that's their job is to gather intel. Mm -hmm. What do you think the apostles are? We're just the intel gatherers. We gather it for you guys, bring it back to you guys so you know how to fight. Because when the day comes that he shows up and gives us the commandment to war, guess who we're warned against? Gog and Magog. Armies of darkness. So we're following. Watch. And in one day, or sorry, in, and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mountain that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early morning to him in the temple for to hear him. All the people, said all the people, came to him in the temple to hear him. They liked what he had to say. Okay, watch. Romans 10. I'll end on this one. Burry. Verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Halia for Israel is that they might be what? Saved. 
Huh? Same word. Same word. For I bear them record, and, and again, most of the churches have no idea. They keep preaching this over and over and over. Oh, we need to pray for the salvation of Israel. We need to pray for Israel. We need to. They don't realize and understand Israel's already been delivered. Here we are. Israel's already standing on their feet. We're waiting for Jacob to come. That's what they need to start praying for is Jacob. And then they'd be praying for themselves. Because Jacob, again, is the house of the Gentiles. Jacob was the uncircumcised. And they still do not get this. And it's not about the uncircumcised in the flesh. It's the uncircumcised in the heart. All right? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Haya, and they do. Jacob and the churches has a zeal. But watch this. But not according to knowledge. It's not according to what they know. They have a zeal, but they're not operating in the knowledge. They haven't touched the knowledge yet. For they, being ignorant of Hoya's righteousness, going about to stand on their own righteousness, again, the word stand or established means to stand in histomy or, or tithomy, which means to take a battle stance. So they literally are standing to defend their own righteousness. Did you hear me? What do you think the carnal mind does? It will defend its own righteousness. It will defend its own opinion that it stands in the right. Instead of saying, wait a minute. Let's say I rebuke, when I'm using this as an example, let's say I rebuke mom. Her first response should be, let's submit. Let's find out exactly what he's going, where he's going with this, and let's sit down and say, okay, where am I in the wrong? Where am I at fault? No, we don't. We usually stand up and start fighting for our opinion. That's wrong. Instead of saying, look, I need to submit. I need to find out where I am standing in the error. Because obviously, if I'm being rebuked, it's for a reason. Nobody's just going to flat out rebuke you for no freaking reason. Unless they're just insane. Or an idiot. Or retarded. Either way. Huh? Either way. And going about to defend or stand in their own righteousness have not submitted. No. Do what now? There you go in the same sentence. They have not submitted themselves. Unto what? Okay, so what? you can go back in the book of Psalms and, and Proverbs and the Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes and, and look up the word law. Over and over and over again, David and Solomon say, His law is righteousness. How righteous are your laws? If it weren't for your law, I'd be dead and sitting in the grave somewhere. That's what David said. Your law has delivered my soul from Hades, or Sheol, the grave. Go look it up. So why would we be preaching against, against His righteousness... Unless we actually love death more. Think about it. David said, your law delivers me from hell every day. So why would I want to go into it every day? Or is it just that their opinion has deceived them? It will. If you don't submit to the law, it will deceive you. Because it's going to start following after what it desires, after what it looks at. Watch. Having stood in their own righteousness, defended their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the law of Haya, or the righteousness of Haya. For Christ, and I love this verse, because nobody in their, that I've ever heard of, has ever researched the word end. They have never, ever bothered to go back and look it up. They take the English word for it and say, oh, well, that's it. It's over. We don't have to worry about it anymore. In the words of the uncircumcised, BS. It is not. The word end, let me show you real quick. 
Love this. <clears throat> it means the goal or outcome. The goal or outcome. The result. I'm not done. I've got one more. You ready? Properly, the point aimed at as a limit. The point aimed at as a limit. What does that mean? That means that's what the law was for. To get me to be conformed to the image of Christ. The point aimed at. In other words, I see the law. In the law, it tells me of Christ. It prophesies of Christ being the Passover sacrifice. So why do I partake? Why do I perform the law? Having the outcome, the end of it, being Christ. So when I'm done fulfilling the law, completing the law, doing everything that I was told to do, I'm conformed to the image of the Son. That's all. But who preaches against the law? Hmm? The Antichrist. Anyone who is an Antichrist. What is an Antichrist? Someone who does not want to be like Christ. There you have it. That's all it means. Someone who will throw the law out means it's they don't want to be like Christ. They don't want to grow up. They don't want to stop sinning. They want to be what they want to be, child. They don't want the responsibility. Simple as that. Because you do. When you're being disciplined, you've got to take the responsibility of being disciplined. You know, I expect my girls to come to me one day when, when I've caught them doing something wrong and say, look, Dad, I'm sorry, I did it. Instead of saying, <laughs> Follow? I want them to take the responsibility and owning up to what they did wrong. What do you think Holly did? What do you think he wants? Why did he have to send Christ? Let's get really technical about this. Why did he have to send Christ? Because we wouldn't. We wouldn't own up. We kept passing the blame on somebody else. So he sent Christ for that purpose to give us the example to follow so we would start owning up for our mistakes. That's what repentance is. Returning back to the law. Owning up for our mistakes. Questions? I need that on my phone if you can do that first, please. Okay. So no questions? All righty then.